Hey everyone, this is Neil King, and we are on the road for this episode. I'm in Stonehenge in England, and I've been to Stonehenge three times, and it is an amazing thing to see such a historical monument up close. You're allowed to walk around it. And I'm here to do some sketching, and uh, as usually, I brought my sketchbook. So this time, I wanted to show my influence um, with uh, a book um, by Craig Thompson, uh, Corne de uh, Voyage. And um, he's just an amazing illustrator, cartoonist, and he does this specific book, a traveling book. And it's just a tiny little thing. And I think he works in a, either just a brush or a brush pen. He's probably moving around doing these things. And I'm wondering whether when he does an image like this, if he's sketching at the bottom of it with a pencil and then going on top right with his brush. But I love his style and he's uh, really into autobiographical stuff and it's just beautiful. And of course I love it because there's a lot of similarities into what I feel like he does and what I do. Um, but as you look at this kind of a book, you can see by the importance of going and uh, sketching in nature and then bringing your own style as a cartoonist to that specific uh, image. And he does all kinds of stuff, whether it's an interior like this or these beautiful exteriors, hatching, does all the kind of things that I'm doing. And uh, it's just really inspiring. I just love looking at them. And he just does such beautiful stuff. And he's gives us a little picture of himself. So here's my sketchbook as usual. And I use my Bic pen when I use this specific one. And these are most of the time are the places I visit, I travel around, whether it's Mexico or things like this. And uh, for this trip um, in England, and here we go, we're going to get started with this specific one. I'm pretty close to the actual um, images here. And again, I'm here with my wife is uh, filming me. Um, kind enough to do it because it can be boring to watch somebody uh, draw for however long it takes. But what I'm trying to do right away is get a sense of where that light is that time of day, very important with Stonehenge, um, and um, and trying to get proportions. So when even when I begin, I'm trying to pick one of the stones, and this is a post and lintel um, architecture, um, and I'm just getting proportions. So if the first ones that you draw, um, whenever you go from there, then everything has to be balanced towards that. So I'm just trying to keep it as much as I can um, in those proportions. Um, it's important also that, you know, once you're trying to start laying in these big shapes, that you just keep looking back and forth. And being a cartoonist, as I've said many times, um, sometimes I want to make things up because I kind of understand how it works and I could draw it. Like even from looking at it a few times, I know I could draw something like this. But the skill in this is to try to look at it and say, how are these things aligned? How many of the things are up front compared to the things in the mid ground and far away? And when you're just working with line like this, and not with some types of values of color or even a gray wash or some type of a thing. What I tend to do is just start figuring out what side has the, the shadows on it and what side doesn't. And of course, with myself, I can't help but do certain things in my style. So I give accents to certain things with the stones. I love to draw stones and stuff. Right now I'm kind of drawing in some of the starlings that are kind of hanging out in that area. They're European starlings, and that's their home, a Stonehenge. So there are all kinds of different birds, apparently, in the area, and you can see them. Um, I looked up, that's jackdaws, rooks, and crows, all kinds of different things. But um, Kira says that there uh, are starlings there today uh, in this specific uh, image. So uh, again, I'm making my way through, trying to get the dimension of some of them because uh, the lintels are resting on top of those posts. So you see a certain amount of the bottom of those stones. 
And you just are, again, trying to say, all right, you know, how is this kind of working out? I'm looking back and forth to see, and I'm just using those hatch lines to, to build um, some value and to push some of those things back. Um, whenever you do these kinds of uh, pieces of work, again, you're just, look at, I'm trying to figure out, like, where does this one end uh, compared to these in the front? You can see how these kind of work. And it's just my angle. And the light at this certain time of day, it was probably around 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock at that point. Lots of tourists, all from all over the world coming over there. And, um, and again, all I'm trying to do is get just my point of view of it and how I feel about it. But as a cartoonist, I'm also trying to figure out um, how to make a nice design of it and make it very readable eventually when I'm all through. So using these kind of big hatch lines, it pushes all of those stones back behind the big stones that are in the front. And um, because it's not pencil that I'm smearing things or, or mushing uh, or mashing uh, um, images together, uh, I do want to try as much as I can um, is to give the true place, placement of those stones. And I'm sure, like, I find myself, sometimes I'm drawing, I'm like, oh, I think I started this too high up or too low. But as a designer also, I just do want to make it seem like it's balanced. And it's easy to read, uh, even with all these hatch marks, because it's there's a lot of shadows on those stones at this time of day. It's uh, overcast and... Um, but I'm just looking back and forth as much as I can. This is the importance of it. Instead of making things up all the time, which I find I do a lot, um, drawing outside uh, with real life is, uh, is really important. And it's helped me, I think, as, a, uh, as an illustrator um, over the years. And I think I've developed kind of a, a sketch style that, um, that I do enjoy doing um, when I am traveling. And it's really added to the experience of all of this. I find I remember all of these sketches far more than I remember some of the photos I take um, that are quickly taken in some specific place, um, especially when you're in a historic place like uh, England, where you're coming across a lot of different things that in your whole childhood you've seen in books and uh, and that's what was so nice about this. Uh, as I finish this sketchbook, uh, perhaps I'll show everyone some of the, the things. We, were, we went to Bath, and we were eventually going to go to Edinburgh uh, in Scotland uh, afterwards. So it was a nice trip back to Europe, which, again, I've been to Europe a few a bunch of times, uh, but never to Scotland. But I have been to Stonehenge, like I was saying. I think this is my third time being in Stonehenge. I may have very well... In one of my other sketchbooks, I have a lot of sketchbooks drawn kind of the same scene. And to remind you that I am a working cartoonist, here's another sample of what I do, The Deep End. This is a kid's book, and it's a fun little book about a girl who is trying to get her swim band. And uh, the idea of goggles, I love the idea, of, I don't know how you are, but when I have goggles underwater, I sometimes see myself as imagining things as I'm down down underwater and this is kind of a story about this but how she's preparing to uh, be able to get her swim band to go across the, uh, the pool and it's like a nice little coming of age story of a little girl who's doing this a lot of fun and it's in my Amazon store with all the other books that I do um, and you can find the link uh, in uh, the right up here on the YouTube channel um, but uh, support this kind of stuff. I do, this is what I really see myself as doing mostly. Love to do books like this. So thanks for the support with that. So back here at Stonehenge. And um, as you can see, again, uh, I'm kind of getting a little bit further in at this point. I'm kind of finishing off a lot of this image. Getting pretty close. Um, now that when you get to this point, again, I have a lot of the main structures in. I am now really focusing on what 
is coming up front and what's not. You know, like, because sometimes if you have some of the images, they all may look like they're on one level. So by just establishing where the bottom of some of them are, as I'm trying to do with just the slightest indications of grass that's on the ground, um, I'm trying to look to see if I can show that texture also of what I'm seeing by broken lines or just types of curves that I could get on top. But still, looking back and forth, where is that shadow? And then because it's line, I may bump up, like I'm trying to do here, the foreground uh, stones, those posts, as they go up so that you re it really super real uh, establishes uh, what's in the front and what's in the back. But at this point, I'm kind of getting there, getting really kind of close to what I see as being um, almost the end of this image. It's a pretty quick sketch. Um, and especially the good thing about having things like this, uh, you know, everything stays in place. It's not like drawing animals or uh, people that at some specific place they could move and then you got to kind of make things up. With this, you know, everything's established. Now I'm just trying to say like, where is the end of like the horizon? And I'm pushing that back and that, that establishes all that on the sides. Again, little bits of texture. I want to make sure that I get some of those starlings in there. They're all over the place. They're coming back around with all these tourists. I'm sure they're very well fed, but they, uh, they, you can see some of them, they get underneath, uh, inside those little crevices, uh, of the rocks. And I just want to establish that they're there. They're like everywhere. And it's an overcast day. So I do want to show some of the clouds so that you can, uh, get a sense of that. It's not just a, a super, light day but this is uh, September in uh, in England and it was surprisingly nice it was about 60 degrees I think somewhere around that uh, I've been there even in the summer when it gets even colder so it's a, it's a different kind of environment uh, Europe than uh, America where I live um, so again finishing up some of the, the the last parts of it I've established some background I'm still getting some hatch lines in there to, to show what's in front of whatever else. It pushes everything back when you have fewer of the hatches on the, the front images. Just pushing this through. This was a lot of fun. Again, I, uh, I tell people all the time, if you have any interest in doing uh, drawing, that this is really a great thing to do, to have a journal of, uh, of the places you go and just take a few minutes and try to see what you uh, can see. As an illustrator, um, it really helps. I love drawing from photos, but this is really makes it a whole different thing for me. Um, so I'm coming down to the end. So I appreciate everybody taking a look at this video. And as always, uh, subscribe and like. And uh, can't wait to get to my next place to draw something outside.